started moving forward and it then squished me, pinned me, if you want to call it that, in between his car and my car as his car was driving away. Now to an Eyewitness News exclusive, the Farmington police officer who was nearly killed by a suspect driving a stolen car is now sharing his story only with us. Earlier tonight, he gave us a behind the scenes look at his recovery. And now chief investigative reporter Matthew Campbell is learning about how officer James O'Donnell is hoping his near fatal tragedy may help shape the future of our state. I went to college for a mechanical engineering degree initially and I took an elective course for intro to criminal justice and I fell in love. That's how Officer James O'Donnell decided to enter public service. September 20th, 2018, I graduated the academy at Central. Then three years to the day he went on the call that nearly ended his life. O'Donnell was dispatched to Talcott Forest Road in Farmington to investigate stolen catalytic converters. Too many to count. Um, it's rare that we usually get them in the act or have the perpetrators or suspects still there when it happens. But police say 32 year old Pedro Acevedo is behind the wheel of the stolen car when officers arrived. He's boxed in between a row of parked cars, a line of trees and Officer O'Donnell's cruiser. Instead of surrendering, the driver crushes O'Donnell against his cruiser and flees. I continued with the momentum and landed um, on the backside uh, or behind my car at that time. My first instinct after all was said and done was, okay, can I move? He couldn't, but even through the pain, O'Donnell was focused on getting the suspect. Tried to give what description I could. Do I know if I was right? I don't know at the time. It, it happened quite fast for me. Doctors would confirm O'Donnell's pelvis was crushed. After a month at Gaylord Hospital in Wallingford, O'Donnell was released and is back home and recovering with his wife, Chris, and two young children by his side. Really no pain at all in my hips. My foot's still really hurting, but the, other than that, it's just discomfort from what's had occurred. <laughs> James and Chris focus on the rehab, but they're also demanding we pay attention to the increase in quality of life crimes that have plagued Connecticut suburbs and cities since the pandemic started. It sadly takes these huge events that make people actually see how dangerous this job can be and what's going on. Through social media, Chris has publicly called out legislators who voted for the police accountability bill. The O'Donnell say they agree with the majority of it. I am a firm believer that the social services will help in some aspects, Absolutely. especially with the youth, Absolutely. especially after all this COVID um, ordeal with the mental health that's been going on. However, O'Donnell believes that qualified immunity should have stayed. Without it, officers who use force can be open to lawsuits in civil court. This is something Chris expressed to us in our first interview. And I would bet my life that my husband did not shoot because we would have lost our house. You can see O'Donnell raised his gun in this dash cam video and we asked if he thought about shooting, but he wanted to wait to get approval from the department before getting into those details. I've moved on from the case, just get myself better and get myself moving. Officer O'Donnell says what happened to him is just a blip in the big picture. He's focused on the future. He's focused on progressing, but he's hoping the state can progress along with him to ensure these crimes aren't running rampant when he returns to the force. It will remain that way until legislations change to allow the judges to impose stricter or sentences, stricter um, conditions. Yeah, conditions of their release. The O'Donnell say they never intended to be the face of the movement to revise the accountability law, but through this incident, they say they had no choice. Now, neither of them felt at the beginning this was going to be a political issue, but after talking with local leaders, they want it to be known that they are taking sides and will be voting Republican tomorrow. Matthew Campbell, Channel 13 News.